Okay, just start. Uh, so we got three first year residents here already, so we can start. So I'm going to talk this uh, four topic, training, what's nuclear mapping, nuclear mapping image, and then uh, history, future of nuclear mapping. So the training, that's the main for the first year. So, so you need a 16 weeks or more clinic nuclear mapping training during your four years. And then your vacation time, uh, you go to study, education conference, all those times are not count. So if you, you do uh, need those time during your rotation, you have to make up in the future. And then uh, you need to, you know, to be able to answer all of the NRC Nuclear Mapping Regulation Commission questions on your examination. I will talk this a little bit more. So uh, training, general nuclear mapping training here, 10 weeks, V hospital, mixed church, PET CT nuclear mapping, four weeks, and PET CT, two weeks. And the, the things that they cover, like a 60%, you know, it's a general nuclear mapping on your examination. 10% PED, and then 30% basic knowledge, including radio pharmaceutical instrument and radiation safety. And then right now, uh, you need to pass this exam so you can get a, a license for authorized user eligible. So if you pass this, uh, we call RISE examination, so they have 50 questions on your core examination. And they, I think they blend it in, into your all of the core uh, examination. And then if you did not pass the first time, they will count that as got separately. So if you do not pass, you have time to make up. Uh, the good news is after you pass this one time, you are done. You, you know, on your 18 months later examination, you don't need to take uh, those questions anymore. So that's, uh, that's better than before, I think. Uh, so when you get this uh, eligible, when you go to practice, basically you, you just can, you know, if they need you to do, we have a lot of writing, they need to do nuclear medicine practice. Basically, they accept that. If you do not have this license, if you go to your hospital private practice, and then they want you to do this, you have to do, you know, whatever they require. Usually it's more strict uh, requirement. You may have to take more examination, do more training, whatever. So it's better, you know, you get all of those uh, one time. So just uh, uh, say what kind of that question you might meet for those uh, rise examination, just give uh, you a little bit, uh, you know, flavor, say what's that. Not that, uh, you know, difficult. Um, Something like this, when you walk into nuclear mapping, this is probably the first sign you see. And then the question might ask you, where does this sign go? Anybody know? A, B, C, D, E. Anybody? So this is probably when you, before you, you know, during, uh, before you go to examination, some number you do need to remember. Yeah, it's just a number, it's a little bit tough. So this is uh, the sign, go to those places. So when you walk into nuclear mapping uh, section, try to look, look at those signs, where they go. So that's a five milligram per hour at a 30 centimeter from source. And then in the past, this is the examination. Uh, the question said, what three rooms are usually, you know, need those, uh, it's designed as a restricted areas in nuclear mapping. So this is an oral boarding examination. So three room, hot lab. And then in past, all of the questions came back, like a bathroom, patient waiting room, you know, all of things. So you need to know image room and thyroid uptake probe room. So that's a three room. This is three room, uh, only this three place is restricted areas. And then what restrictions are applied to those restricted areas? 
So you need to pull that sign without alerting off. And then you, you need to secure all radioactive materials. And then you need to either lock or constantly monitor restricted areas. For example, your hot lab. You know, like say, you, you go to our nuclear emitting section, you say all hot lab, they're always open. And then that's not correct. Whenever there's no people in that room, they should be closed. So don't get the wrong contact, uh, concept because uh, sometimes we are not uh, really, you know, go with those, uh, strictly go with those requirements. What are the radiation limits to an unrestricted area? So that's just a number you need to remember before you go. So two milligrams in any hour. So those choices can be very, very confused. So you need a very clear concept in your brain. So in any hour, what sign must be posted in un unrestricted areas? Anybody, what sign you need to put in? Anybody? Unrestricted areas. You don't need to put any sign. So that's you go in a bathroom, patient waiting room, office, front desk, and they don't have those signs. And then uh, you should know a little bit about those uh, uh, radiation dose from nuclear emitting study because that's a common question they will ask you from the clinician, from patient, and the probably by yourself, or just say, what's a nuclear emitting study radiation dose? Um, if we just pick up, say, bone skin. So we give us three, you know, reference number. One is a miller silver, one is the equivalent number of the chest x-ray. It's more easy to, for people to understand. And then it's compared to the background, how many years it is. So the bone skin is a 200 equivalent, uh, equivalent to 200 chest x-ray. And then CT chest, 400. Abdominal pelvis, 500. So you kind of get a you know, general idea of what's that. Very useful form, you can look at them reference. So way to train in the nuclear medicine, because I already heard the, the, the new resident talk to me, they kind of a little bit, you know, anxiety, don't know what's a nuclear medicine, um, you know, that's things. So don't be panic in the past, they do very well, we have a, you know, same data on the in-service exam, 99% 99, 99 tell after the first rotation. Tom got a 98% tell after, first, after, after second rotation. So you will pretty quick get idea as long as you concentrate on your training. Uh, that's an important thing. So the first thing you, you need to know, this is a very important field, bright future. Will, you will get more and more on um, those uh, studies on your practice. So you really need to, you know, uh, concentrate on the study. It's very different than radiology. Uh, we will talk a little bit more. So when you, when, you know, when read a uh, pediatric plain film, uh, you know, I talk to the resident. you know, um, I talk to them a little bit more difference when you do the report. You know, for the radiology report, very straightforward. You have a, you have four fingers. You have four fingers. You know, but for nuclear medicine, you probably have to, you know, go either, you know, even deeper. Say why he has four fingers. That's my report. Kind of go that direction. Not only phenomenon, and then you have to ask yourself why. I have to answer the clinician why. So that's the nuclear medicine is a little bit more deeper than the, not that straightforward. Um, so you need uh, four months. You, when you come to rotation, you need to just do nuclear medicine. Don't run over and concern your other rotation. And then you only have four months. In the past, you do six months. So you really, we try to teach you with a short time. And then you want to, you know, we, we get training two years or three years nuclear medicine. So you want to use four months, you try to get the same level when you graduate. So you really have to concentrate. 
Um, and then another thing, you need to uh, attend, the, attend to the meeting because a lot of things you may never see in clinically. That's a very rapid development. A lot of study, they are testing you on the examination, but not, uh, not uh, do very often right now. So if you don't come to the conference, you just miss them. You have to read on your own. You may totally not understand. Uh, so you have to come to conference. We have a 12, three, three time right now. You know, nuclear medicine physician gave the talk. So you can uh, learn a lot during conference. Try to make up the gap between the clinic training and the, you know, your testing. And then the another hand, the 30% basic knowledge will test on your examination. The majority you will get from the conference and then uh, not uh, from the daily practice. I will point out some important thing, but I cannot take uh, hours hours to talk to you uh, very detailedly. So that's, you need to come here. And uh, also uh, physical courses will teach you some. And, uh, and another thing, when you go to do rotation, especially on your second and third rotation, you need uh, to um, study with technologies and then to learn some basic things. And then, like I mentioned, uh, that's the nuclear imaging study different than other image uh, modalities. We use a gamma ray. And then our image is uh, from inside to out. We call it emission image. And it's a comprehensive specialty. When you come here, you need to know clinic information. You, you know, the more clinic information you, you know, and then you will give more answer, better answer to the clinician. And also we have a, uh, the treatment, the, uh, the therapy, not only diagnosis, and like uh, last thing is a very rapidly growing field. Even during your four years, you will see the study. You know, first rotation, you may see some study. Fourth rotation, you came back, you may see some, a lot of new. Uh, so this thing you need to keep in mind. And then based on the scheduling, in the morning you come here, you, you need to protocol all of those uh, uh, studies. That's very important, important for you to learn, not only reading. Reading, I always said that reading in nuclear medicine, uh, you know, section only small portion. Your majority work will be, you know, protocol study, understand the clinical information, all of things, it takes time a lot of time. Sometimes it can take a longer time than you are reading the study. Uh, so if some, some people always say, oh, you, you don't have a lot of things to do in the morning. So I said, that's not a true statement. You know, sometimes I'm just trying to, you know, I'm lazy to call you right and come here. You know, technologists look for me to answer all of the questions, resolve the, you know, check the examination, do the protocol. So that's all of the morning. Uh, you know, clinical practice. If you don't know this, you only know reading, you will never uh, able to practice those things. And the uh, uh, detailed schedule patient, uh, it's uh, because study is uh, our two days. So when you scheduling patient, you know, you have to say what's the patient, you, know, you have to inform patient how long the study, and then especially for all patients, can they come the following day if the study needed? And then tailor study protocol. Every study is probably a little bit different. We have standard protocol. It's rarely we use that. You have to understand, you know, what do they want, and uh, you can tailor the study. And patient uh, preparation very different than radiology. And some is, uh, like say, for example, HIDA study, you know, same HIDA study for different purpose, patient preparation different. If for bio leak, you don't need any preparation, you know, if you don't, you don't know that, you may take, a, you know, hours try to figure out a patient prepared uh, properly. In fact, you don't need any, you know, preparation. However, if they do high the study, they want to look for acute cholecystitis, and then you do have a lot of preparation, you need uh, to ask uh, how long patient has a fasting, and then usually it's uh, four hours. However, if longer than 24 hours, uh, you need to do further, you know, you pre-CCK treatment. 
And then patient, uh, is the patient on the pain medication, narcotic medication, if they do, and then you cannot do that right away. You have to wait based on the half-life. So all of those things, and also they have a lot of uh, interfering condition, and then you need to know, because if you don't know this, you start studying, your result, you know, just cannot be read. This is a functioning, you know, examination. It's not exactly as anatomic. You know, you have to say what the function is. And then, uh, again, mention the study time. You have to know what's the time, you know, each study hours could be two days, it could be even further. And also, every study very expensive. Um, you know, the, the least expensive, expensive study probably is $600 something. The very, you know, the more expensive one, $62,000. So you cannot protocol wrong, just say, oh, I do that, and then I come back to repeat, and you don't have chance. So it's very, very important. Um, and then based on how do you read those studies, uh, again, it's, uh, you know, you, when you came here, you have to change your, uh, you know, paradigm a little bit, not like radiology, only say something very, you know, frustrate, you know, tell you the things, not that clear. So you have to think, you have to know clinic. So when you come here, and then also it's a function, you have to answer function question, and also anatomic point question. And then also nuclear medicine study is very technique dependent. So you have to know all of those, uh, you know, technique issue, and then to rule out those artifacts in order to read the study. So for example, this is the, the cases. You know, uh, the patient come here for I-123 whole body scan, and then this is the image the technologist got. So they call me, come to the, you know, reading room, say, okay, this is the image, what's going on? And then, so you have to figure out what's going on. It's, uh, anybody can tell me what's, what's the reason can cause this kind of blurring imaging. Carter? <laughs> just, just mention the reason you think it couldn't cause this. Wrong, um, Wrong tracer? Yeah. I mean, using the wrong uh, gamma camera, photo peak, isn't it? Photo peak, off photo peak. What else can we So this is all the reason, like, uh, like he said, you have to think of what's this going on. So this is, can be all of reason, patient's motion, of photo peak, uh, uh, it's a very far distance between camera to patient, wrong radio pharmaceutical, wrong collimator, right? And then this is only general your differential, but in case of this patient, what's going on? And then this is, the, we repeated the image. We did something differently, we repeated the image. And then, so this is, you see all of the lesion. So we are able to treat patient. So, uh, so in fact, this patient, you know, come for Ivan 23 scan, but he, he had taken Ivan 31 study, uh, the tracer, 16 days earlier than this. And then he did not return back. And then nobody remember, you know, what's going on. At least usually they don't, they don't go out physician first, they just go directly to technologies. So patient came back, so we gave patient I-123 tracer again. So we did a collimator based on I-123 lower photo energy, 159 keV. So all of the high energy from I-131 remain in the body, it's a penetrating the collimator, so cause all of the blurring imaging. And then after we, f we find out from the clinic node, so we put a medial energy collimator, and then this is the repeat image we got. Um, so that's just to tell you the example, you know, what the uh, going on could be. So on, on the rotation, when you come to here, do the re, uh, rotation, this is, a, you know, I really want to write and to know, you know, you need to ask a question. The, on, on your first uh, several rotation, definitely majority study will read together. Um, so I talk, uh, you know, write for all the questions every day, 
you know, for first rotation, I, I may know, you know, you, you are zero, so I can talk some question to you, it's new to you. But pretty soon, you know, second you come back, I don't know what you know, what you don't know. So you need to ask me the question, so we discuss. If you don't ask me, I'm kind of proud. Okay, don't waste time. Um, and also, like I said, you know, when you read study, each study will go through, you have to totally understand that. You don't expect to repeat read many studies again and again. You may just meet one study once during your four years. So you really need to dig in to understand that. Um, and you need to do a lot of self-learning. You know, we teach you, but you definitely you need to do your learning and the reading. So this is I recommend it. You know, what do you do? Your first rotation, we have procedure menu online and have a hard copy. You do that. When you meet that study, you go to read that procedure menu very quickly, several minutes, you know, half hour, you, you know what's, what's going on here. Um, and then you can catch up the new study. And then you start to read a textbook. I show you later on. You, you pick up one textbook, start to read. And then the second rotation, you need to spend time with technologies. And then finish reading your textbook. The third rotation, you need to control the reading room by yourself. And then pre read the cases. And now the first, first, second one, probably read always with you. But the third one, you start, you, you need to read uh, by yourself first. And then you shouldn't read a case review book. And then by the fourth rotation, basically you shouldn't control all of the study, you know, the procedure. And then you prepare for your practice. Finish your case review book. Um, so this is uh, the book you need to read. One is Mettler and the um, nuclear methane requisite. You can choose either, either one. You don't have to read both, just one of them. Uh, and then this is a case review book. You, everybody, I recommend you read that. Very easy to read and understand, you know, mm -hmm. all of the questions. So this is a procedure menu. You know, even right now I have a constant go back to refer that. That's an old Bible. You need to read that. Okay, so next question, what is a new case method? That's a probably very, very simple. So diagnosis and therapy with unsealed sources. Like a, a bricky therapy, that's not a sealed source. So, and then you basically you just use this uh, radio pharmaceutical uh, and the gamma camera to resolve clinical question and then treatment. So you have to know what's a radio pharmaceutical. That's a two component. One is a radio nuclei, one is a pharmaceutical portion. And then 70% nuclear methane study use uh, uh, technetium 99 and labeled some kind of chemistry stuff. For example, you have a study, this is an isotope you use, and then technetium 99 and. and then this is the MAA, and then this tracer, I together this tracer go into the lung and then detect a regional perfusion. So uh, when we ask you, Tracer always gave me, you, you never say non technician 99M. You have to say, what's that label? It's not that uh, too complicated. Common radionuclei, very commonly we use just several of them. They will definitely testing on your examination. The most common one, technician 99M. Photo peak, you need to know 140 keV, half-life, six hours. Oh, this is this. Sorry, this is the label around this. And so those are photo peak, you need to know the half life, and then when you know this, you know you will know how do you use that. When do you image them? This is a mechanism of a radio pharmaceutical localization. It's on the book, and then when you learn each study, you learn them. When you before you go to the test, you you go over this chart, you probably will manage everything. Like say, for example, passive diffusion, we have DTPA for the brain study, and also you have a cyst maybe for the uh, passive diffusion, and then you have active transport, 
and then thallium that we commonly use. And then MAGA study, you use a compart uh, compartmental localization. So those things you need to um, know. For the therapeutic uh, isotope, this, they are testing very commonly. Most of the time, they, you know, several years, they're testing this radiopharmaceutical, the Semarine 153, and then they like, let you choose, say, what's this radiopharmaceutical treatment for? And then they give you all of the choice. So you need to know this is for pain, for bone pain treatment. And then commonly, you know, maybe confused with uh, um, P32, so that different treatment. And then this is the abbreviation. Yeah, that's all you, every day you will mention those abbreviation for your practice. And then the, another confused issue when you come in, uh, it's the order, order issue, the name. Every clinician use a different name. They can order say, I want a brain study, I want a renal study, and then uh, I want Hydra, I want a Decider. You know, it can be very confused for everybody. So uh, you need to know that's a name. They can use a lot of different names. It can based on the you know study location, and then brain dice and what they look for. Or uh, they can use a uh, abbreviation of the tracer. And the important thing is, you know, when they order, you need to ask them what do you want, what are you looking for. For example, if they order renal study. And then if they want to look for renal function and obstruction, and then that's a mega-3 renal study. And then if they want to look for the scarring uh, pyelonephritis, that's used the DSM-8. And then so all of things, not the renal, renal scan can be many, many different kind of study. So this is a you need to uh, keep in mind. And the instrument, of course, the first thing we use is the gamma camera. So very simple etiology, you need to know how this camera works. So this is a patient lying here, and then we already inject the tracer, and then they have a gamma ray goes through this is a collimator. And then this is a photo light heat into the uh, photo multiplayer tube, and then they transfer it into the electronic signal, and then get it into the computer and then go into your reading uh, station. So very simple, you know, things, but uh, the simple you have to know. So this is all spec CT machine. Type of collimator they will testing a lot. When you go to physical course, you will learn that. So majorly for different uh, collimator uh, type of parallel, most common use, pinhole, and then the converge, diverge. And then we also, based on the thickness of the collimator septum, mm -hmm. we divided a high energy, medium energy, low energy collimator. So that's why the initial I told you, the photo peak, you need to know how much uh, energy this tracer you use to have, and then you can choose a different collimator. And also, you based on the thickness, length of the septum, you have a high sensitivity collimator and the high resolution collimator. And then they, they probably will test me on the examination, just to give you the picture, very simple, ask you what's this? What's this, anybody? Square, what's this? Is it Yeah, so it's simple for them when you see that. What's this? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, survey meter or Geiger counter. This is probably somebody. Carter, have you remember this one? We don't have this anymore. Oh, is this the bar uh, filter for the thing one? Yeah, so this, uh, so like those, you have to say on the lecture, we don't have this anymore. It's broken, so we don't, we don't, right now we change to aerosol examination. <coughs> okay, so, Nuclear mapping image. This is another uh, thing, just like a, um, a nightmare. Um, you know, your first thing I have to know the, the nuclear mapping image. 
the like I mentioned earlier, we have general nucleomethane and then PET. So general nucleomethane with that planar image, spike, spike CT, future we may have spike MRI. PET will have PET CT, PET MRI. So just talk about the nucleomethane, general nucleomethane. So planar image, this is a planar image. Your camera height just stay in the one location. You get a very limited depth of the imaging. And then, um, so this is a patient have a prostate cancer. And is anybody can point the abnormality? The folic caster square, can you tell any abnormality? Okay. So this is a planar, and then we, we date spike. Is anything wrong in the lumbar spine? Can you tell? Still not working? Hmm. I don't know. This shouldn't be. Uh, see the. See whether they're working here. Just try to show you the, okay, still not working. Okay, so this is the back. They can do the rotation on, and unfortunately, you cannot do that. And then after the spine, like say here, we saw the lesion here, and then the cervical, the, the spine is a very diffuse increase uptake, probably just degenerative change. But when you do the spike, we see the one focus up here. Um, so more clear. And then this is a way for the lookup of what's going on. So we click that uh, increase uptake on the spine. And then this is on CT, nucleomethane increase uptake, and then fuse the imaging. And then for the look at CT, so here, very small osteoblastic lesion but very typical location in the pedicle region. So this is indicate patient have metastasis. If you only look at planar image, very difficult. And with the spec, it's better, but with spec CT, you definitely tell them uh, this is a lesion, probably less than one centimeter, you can, you can cut out. And the, another difficult thing for the, all of the uh, residents especially for the, you know, when you go to examination, you will get a panic about the nucleomethane imaging. Probably they have a lot of questions. Just like a normal anatomy, you have to know what kind of skin, what's the normal biodistribution. If you don't know the normal, you don't know the abnormal. So this is uh, all of those, uh, you know, trees uh, we commonly use, and then um, you, you have to know what kind of trees are used. So the, in the past, this, uh, the prior resident, they, you know, they got uh, all of panic about this, but good thing they developed this uh, strategy or steps to see how to recognize all of those uh, scans. So the first step, you, you see the quality of the skin. So either the study is good or the quality of skin is poor. And then the good quality of the skin it's technician, either technician or pet. The issue is, like I mentioned earlier, 70% nucleomethane study use technician. So the gamma camera, camera is designed for technician. So you, usually your image is much, much better. So this is a high quality imaging. And then all of the bones again, have a colloid, and then technician, protagonitate, set maybe, that's all technician. And then part of course, it's a high energy uh, gamma, cam, uh, gamma ray, so it's a high quality. And then you have poor quality of the uh, imaging, so all of it is not used by technician. If you remember the early form, not that many. So you have indium-11, gallium, xylene study, this is uh, antibody 
antigen study. You have octreotide, and then you have MIBG, you have iodine uh, scan. And then after you divided them, and then the second step is say what kind of tracer we use. So for poor quality, and then the, fir the first thing you look at, you know, it, it, that scan has a lacrimal activity. And then if, yes, they do, gallium study. You see, this is a lacrimal activity. It looks like somebody stared out <coughs> of you. So when you see this is a gallium study, if they don't have that, and then you will ask okay, that spleen has the most intense uptake. If they do, so WBC scan. So this is a spleen, has the most, this is a post-tier review and tier review, has the most intense uptake, WBC scan. If a spleen not has the most intense uptake, usually that's, you know, this is the evidence scan, anti antibody antigen scan. And then, if the study do not have a, um, sorry, first thing I have to say the skeletal activity, I forgot to say. So we call this a bone agent, always go here. So all have bone uptake. And then you'll see lacrimose activity, and then you'll see spleen. And then if no bone activity, you go this side. Do they have a salivary or lacrimal activity? If they do, and then some kind of iodine, you know, study. So this is a I-122, I-123, or I-131 labeled MIBG study. This is a iodine sodium study. And then if they don't have those activity in salivary gland or lacrimal, and then this is all trail test again. So this is all of uh, the poor quality image right now you can recognize. And then we talk about the poor quality of imaging, and then you have a good quality of imaging. And then again, the first thing you look at skeleton or bone uptake. If they, they do have bone uptake, you go this way. And then you see whether they have a liver or spleen uptake. And then if they do, you have two studies end up. This is a subcolloid, this is a, the, uh, the PET study. And then if you don't have liver spleen activity, bone skin. And if they don't have the bone uptake, and then you go this way, and then whether they have a cardiac activity. And then if they do, this is a sex maybe study. That's what you usually use for cardiac study. If they don't, this is a protected study. So uh, you go over this chart a couple times, you probably will recognize all of those studies. 
And then before you go to exam, or you know, before you come to the rotation, you can look at this chart. So I will now give you an answer, and then you know you can just uh, work on yourself, say what's the study based on that uh, strategy, and then to recognize them. So after you know this, just like you know what's a chest, normal chest X-ray, and then the knee, shoulder, anatomy, and then you know you pretty easy to cut up an abnormal uptake and the abnormal study. Okay, last question, the, just a very brief talk about history, current practice, and future of nuclear medicine. So this is a how, where we come long away, you know, of until here today. So this is the initial nuclear medicine study series again. That's why they call the unclear nuclear, nuclear medicine. But this is all right now, the nuclear medicine study, parasitoids again. And then this is bones again. You see, you even can clear, say this is a fracture, that's not, sh the you know, plain film cannot tell, so we detect that, we recommend the MRI, so it's confirmed, that's a fracture, so very, very clear. On the brain, the initial study show very blurring tumor, and then that's the, uh, the first gamma camera, this is our spec CT right now. And then this is the current, uh, the PET study, you can see the tumor. So right now we have uh, 100 different uh, diagnostic uh, image procedures plus some uh, treatment procedure you can perform. And nearly 20 million nuclear imaging study performed every year. Uh, this is only 2007. Right now probably number is bump up a lot. And then this is uh, the practice we shouldn't say, like say uh, all hospital size, a little bit of, you know, more than 400 bag. And then the every year we shouldn't, uh, you know, do the nuclear medicine study, 7,000, more than 7,000. And we are pr probably close that, have to add a PET CT. And then this is, uh, you know, in the each uh, specialty, cardiology is still the most, 46 and then oncology, neurology, other study. And then this is the future of the market. They just have a recent article they come for the uh, forecast of the future nuclear medicine uh, market. And then they will grow annually 12% 12, 12%, very rapidly. And still two major type of nuclear medicine study, as we mentioned, the PIT and the SPAC. However, this may change because of the tracer, like I said, majorly we use technetium. And then technetium is produced by the moly technetium generator. And then the moly is produced by the reactor. We probably will face shortage of the technetium pr uh, pr product. We have been uh, shortage in back to 2008. And then uh, next year, we may face this problem again. So in that case, a lot of research right now, they go toward to the pad. They, they try to develop a new pad agent and uh, machine, try to replace with, uh, you know, most of the study, a nuclear, general nuclear medicine study with pad. So this is how do, we, how do they produce this is, uh, technician. So this is a reactor, and then they go to, go to the, get a pure molly, and then they get a generator that's delivered to every local pharmacy or hospital, and then they got technician. Right now, they only have a five big uh, place they have this reactor, and uh, no single of this place they purely produce uh, the molly. They always just multiple tracer. So largest one in Canada, and then all of those uh, uh, reactor very old, so they need the uh, money to maintain, and then that's why 2008 the the uh, reactor in Canada is closed because they suspicious some leak. So they spent a lot of money because two quickly happened the issue of the whole world, it's just no tracer. So, uh, so the government, so they try to, you know, um, 
manage this issue, and then the Canada gov government support them to maintain and then renew license. But they said they will not support to renew license next year again. So that's a, this uh, reactor supply 40% of the technician to the uh, of the whole world. So when they are really close permanently, we will get to the problem. And then the same thing with another four is very old. You see, that's need a lot of money to maintain those radioactive tracer. So right now they put a lot of uh, grant uh, the money try to uh, research for the new way to produce the technetium. Either they use uh, like a uh, um, cyclotron or some uh, other things to try to do, but still not uh, very successful and plus very very expensive. So we don't know, you know, what we are going to face too. Uh, so this is the new, you know, current and the future of the nuclear mining field. So all of radiology, you are really good at this. So that's the dual modality. So you have to know spec CT, PET CT, PET MR, spec MRI. So the right now the rising of PET MR machine. This is developed in 1990. Of course, they have a lot of uh, challenges. But uh, until now, they, they already have a very good machine, machine come out. So the major principle is MR provides excellent soft tissue you know, contrast compared to CT, as you know. So the MRI is the first line image procedure compared to CT in following those field, neural, brain tumor, height neck region, and abdominal, liver, pelvis and uh, MSK area, just uh, as we know right now. And then no radiation on, on the MRI. And then they probably, this uh, PET MR will serve as a problem resolving uh, tool for the non-review uh, or confused question scanned by PET CT. And uh, additionally, MR is not only anatomic image, they also can provide some functioning imaging. So they both very powerful plus PET and MR. So that's why they right now they really have a very strong um, trend to go to this direction. So right now we have a, a semen and GE, they both can produce this PET MR machine. Of course, they use a different detector, and then G use a silicon, and then Simon use this APD-based detector, because that's the major issue. And then, you know, you cannot put them into the magnetic field, so they have to use a new, either no magnetic, uh, you know, uh, feature of the detector, so can put it into the MR field machine. Uh, the machine provides a very beautiful image. I will give you a couple uh, examples. And then the, another thing is, you know, this is the first time the PET is inside of MRI. It's not like a PET CT or SPEC CT. They always, spun, they always scan one after another one. But this one, because of the PET, they can put it into the MR machine. So they can scan them at the same time. So in that case, you save time. You, you know, you get a two study just with one time. You know the MRI and the PET, they're always a time consuming study. So with this, you really just time, you know, it's very good and also your cost is going down compared you do, you know, either or separately. And also because of this is spontaneous, you know, require, so either the two function at the same time, they open a lot of uh, research field. So this is an example, you can see this is a PET study, see the uptake in the tumor. This is an MR alone fl uh, flare sequence. You'll see the you know, abnormal field. This patient had tumor post-surgery, and then with this uh, uh, MR, you know, appearance, they can indicate either edema or versus, uh, you know, the kumi has a viable tumor. So after you fill them together, and then you clear, see, this is a viable tumor. And then this area is, is no viable tumor. 
And then for the abdomen, same thing. So this is a pattern alone. And then if you remember the normal distribution, you know this is a normal. However, something is abnormal here. And then also, the, you can see that this is a bladder. You can see this is a diverticulum incidental funding. And then this is a pied. Very clear, you see lesion here. And then you fill them together, you cut off that lesion. All spec CT do a lot of those neuroendocrine tumor, but we never can cut off the primary tumor because they are usually very small in a small bone. And then just like this, there's no way we can tell say, where exactly. But the PET MR will give you this clear imaging. Okay, so I think I'm end up here. Any questions? Thank you.